on. Okay, so on the bench today we have one of these Fender, what are these called, the Pawn Shop series? Excelsior! Amplifiers. It's a tube amp with push-pull 6v6. Oh, and today also we're kicking back with my friend TJ. He's over here sorting my all these tubes. There's millions of tubes. Jamming to some Jimmy Smith, having a glass of bourbon. So the problem with this, Excelsior! After a while of heating up, it starts to red plate on one of the tubes. That would be this this tube right here. Now this has a split chassis design. There's a there's a bottom chassis for the power section and there's a top chassis for the preamp section. And like many old amplifiers that this is sort of trying to mimic the look of, um, it has this layout where you have this umbilical cord that ties, you know, all the uh, all the stuff together. So you've got you know the high voltage lines and everything running through this little piece of conduit right here. And the problem with the conduit is they really don't they really don't supply you with enough of it uh, because it only gets you down just above the you know the level of your bench or your desk or whatever i mean it's just kind of kind of a pain in the ass at any rate uh so the main problem i could see with this thing just from a construction standpoint would be that they did things right over here in that all of the dropping resistors and the power supply you can see them there they are well up off the board and it's probably a good thing too because you could see you could see there's been a lot of uh heat down there at the board you see how it's discolored down there just a lot of discoloration. There's been a lot of heat right there at those points. I'm gonna lift these boards and just check for bad solder joints while while we're in here. He said this thing is cooking tubes, just going through lots and lots of tubes. And uh, he's tired of having to buy tubes all the time and tired of it not being reliable. The goal for today is to make it a little bit more reliable. So hopefully we can accomplish that. So I think first thing we want to do is uh, over here, you can see this is the bias resistor and that is the big, I guess it's a 10 watt. Yeah, 10 watt bias resistor. And that thing though is right down on top of that, this board. When this is in the amp, that board is upside down. So any heat that that generates is going right up into that PCB right there and just cooking the hell out of that PCB. So we need to make sure that that has some, some space between the board and it so it can dissipate heat a little better like I said they they got it right over here on these uh, screen resistors are right here and it looks like those are 470 if we haven't been given any kind of mandate to go in here and start modding a lot of things because um, I think he just wanted it reliable more than anything else he, does, he you know he likes the tone of it more or less isn't that right yeah, yeah, yeah he likes it he can't trust to take it on a gig yeah he likes the tone of it more or less according to TJ and well according to him we talked to him on the phone earlier but he just you know says it's not reliable so hopefully we can uh, make a little bit more reliable for him the other thing that we that we noted about this when we were playing it is that the speaker really isn't the greatest it's not it doesn't handle all the frequencies that this thing can produce really well it could really stand an upgraded speaker and so if you have one of these that would be the first thing I'd recommend is a better speaker something that could handle some of the some of the lows a little bit better also I noticed that there was a lot of rattling going on and I thought it was cabinet rattle and I kept feeling around for the different you know spots where it might be rattling I kept grabbing all the chassis and all this stuff and when I opened this thing up uh, it had some loose bits of shielding if you have one of these also you might want to do this just on principle open the thing up and make sure the shielding uh, hasn't begun to come loose on you and if you had loose shielding like this and one of these pieces was actually completely loose and rattling around inside and I think that's what was making the noise I kept hearing on certain notes anyway. So, I, you know, removing that's good for that reason. But also because, you know, obviously you don't want a piece of shielding rattling around inside the, uh, particularly the bit of the amplifier that deals with all your power section and stuff coming from the wall. So, um, that it might be a good thing if you own one of these. Just open up this bottom chassis. Make sure you don't have any loose bits rattling around like this one did. Man bear pig. I don't see any obviously bad solder joints on this board, but we're gonna flow all the solder anyway. And, uh, you know, obviously, we, like I said, we gotta do something about that resistor.
Okay, you should be able to see this, uh, the discoloration that's under there, and you can kind of see what I mean about how that resistor was cooking that board. I mean, all of the heat of that is just going straight up into that board. So that's all heat damage. And if, you know, if that went on for years and years and years, it would just continue to get worse. And it's possible that the board itself could become conductive and then things get really bad if that happens. And heck, it may have already happened. I, I don't know. And that might be the reason why it's red plating like it is. And if that's the case, you know, the only uh, fix would be to rebuild this board. That might not be the appropriate value for this. It might be why this was heating up too much to begin with. Come on, this is where Mapper Pig is. I'm serial. Okay, so the idea behind doing this, I'm just putting a couple of uh, temporary wires in here that will give us something to grab onto so that we can test the bias and we can adjust that on the fly. Okay, so this is a, a resistance box. It's, it has selectable resistances from 15 ohms all the way up to 10K on this side. And then if you switch this, it goes from 15 all the way up to 10 meg over on this side. So we're gonna keep it on the low side. We'll start off with uh, 470, which I think is what that was, right? 470. So we'll start off right there. And then if there needs to be adjustments, we will adjust up and down and see if uh, we can improve things by doing that. It's made of plastic, so you can you can pretty much set it anywhere. You set it right inside the amp if you want, as long as it don't flip it over. So the actual resistance is pretty much spot on. It's 470. So that means the uh, resistor in my resistance box hasn't drifted. I also want to make sure my other resistances that I'm going to probably end up switching to to test are where they should be. So we'll check the 330. And it is pretty much there. And our 680 is actually 660. So that's not far off. It's not enough to really bother with so okay the other thing we're going to want to measure actually i should have left those on there the other thing we're going to want to measure is the voltage drop through uh that resistor when the amp is on so the amp is on we're plugged into the variac and we're going to fire it up here and we're starting to go somewhere on the voltage drop through that resistance we're at 680 actually right now Uh, we got trim going, don't we? Let's turn that trim off. Okay, so that's that's with the tremolo off, and you can see it stabilizes that uh, bias voltage. But with the trim on, you can see the bias voltage fluctuating up and down, and that's how the trim operates on this amp. We'll just hang out here for a second and see if this kind of stabilizes. It looks like it's maybe trying to steadily climb here I don't know maybe not we'll get we'll give it a second and just monitor it monitor this and then we will uh, we'll try switch in this resistance and uh, and do some calculations Ohm's law what was that Oh, fuck's sake. What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? That one was getting... What? I thought I saw color in that one. I thought. I was hearing some clicks, for sure. You heard it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the voltage drop was, was starting to run away. So I need a new set of tubes, and the problem is I don't have a brand new set on hand. Okay. Sticking new tubes in it, you kind of risk burning up new tubes. So I really don't want to do that without knowing for sure what the exact problem is. But I'll tell you one thing I could do. We'll pull the tubes out and we'll see if the amp, I gotta wait a second cause they're, they're pretty hot. We'll let the tubes cool off. And then once they cool off, we'll yank them out of here and we'll fire the amp back up and see if it stabilizes with no output tubes. I'll bet this is where he's hiding. This looks like member pig central. We have the, one of the tubes here on the tester. The filament's good and continuous. It's sort of, tries to test good it's not it's really weak but look at this look at the short i tap this and basically cause this thing to short out so 
And if I tap it the right way, it'll just short and stay there. So we've got definitely got a short uh, between one of the elements in this thing. So definitely a bad tube, but the problem is, um, you know, we really don't know whether the tube was the initial cause of the problem or whether it's just a symptom of a wider problem. From what I can see inside the amp, I think it's probably just a tube in this case. Uh, but it could be a case of the bias being so far off inside the amp that uh, it's just cooking tubes. But the thing is, he said that this thing was cooking tubes normally. Um, but these tubes are older. This is from 2010. So I don't know if 2010 was the last time he changed tubes. Um, and if so, that's a pretty good run for a set of tubes. And, but if not, it could be that these were pulls from something else also. And that these were already, you know, weak or bad tubes. So, I mean, your, your mind starts just uh, sort of doing a Sherlock Holmes on this kind of shit. And, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is we're just, our task is to figure out, you know, what's the source of this problem. Right now, it looks like the source is a tube. Uh, but we'll check the bias as well. But I, I just want to see if this tube is having the same symptoms. And the answer right now, at least, is no. Because this would already be shorting. Yeah, this tube is actually... This I, this tube looks like a good tube. But the thing is, too, um, you know, when you've got one tube that's shorted over here, and it's red plating or whatever it's doing, the other tube is kind of... A lot of times will be working overtime... Uh, trying to make up for the weakness of this other tube so this one you know may have been strained and could be compromised as well now this might be a good tube to keep around in your stash uh, if you had for instance like a little single ended output amp or something like that a little five watt amp um, and that would be good for something like that possibly to stick in because that's reading really good so you know it's still a good tube but what we're going to do here, I do have, uh, I can use this tube, and I do have one new tube that we can use just for testing purposes for now. Um, it's not going to be matched with the other one. It doesn't necessarily even have to be matched, to be quite honest, because sometimes you, you get really nice uh, breakup and stuff with uh, asymmetry anyway, but the best thing to do might be to just order a new set of tubes. But we're going to put this in here just to test and make sure there's not something else going on. I am super, super serial. All right, so we're firing this thing back up now after inserting a new JJ tube in one of the sockets. Uh, the other one still has the old tongue sole tube, which we determined was good. Uh, we are drawing 51 and a half watts overall. Uh, we are at 470 ohms um, on our resistance. And we have uh, 29 volts of uh, of drop across the resistor. So um, we want to write that, those figures down and I don't have anything to write with. Let's, should have thought of that up front. 29.2 volts of voltage drop. And we're gonna make just make sure this is stable and that it's not doing anything funky. It's not trying to fake us out because uh, earlier it did start to run away on us and we definitely don't want that to happen. But I don't think it's gonna happen because obviously we don't have a shorted tube like we had last time. So. All right, so this is at 470 ohms. So we'll write that down there. We are also going to need the the plate voltage. So this one is ground over here, the black one. That's on the ground. So we will move this. We need to check the plate voltage. 399. So yeah, 399 plate volts. Okay, and that's that's one measurement I wanted to take with the 470. Uh, and now we're gonna switch up to 680. And we should see things change. Uh, instantly we change up to 36.8 on the voltage drop. 36.8 volts drop and that's at 600. What did I say earlier was 660 is the actual real world figure on that. And we'll check the plate volts, 432. Okay, so the plate volts now is at 432 plate volts. 29.2 divided by 470 is gonna give us a current figure. And we need to multiply that by 399. 
Uh, 24.7. And we need to divide that by 2. And that's going to give us a rough estimate for each 6v6. And at 12.39 watts, that's the full plate dissipation at idle. So that's not good. That's not. Now, no wonder this thing is burning up tubes. Right now, actually, we're at 37.5. So let's go ahead and go with 37.5. 660, uh, so that's divided by 660. There's our current, and let's multiply that by 432. Doop, doop, doop. 24 and a half, and it's, yeah, it's, again, if we divide that in half, it went down a little bit, but not enough. So let's, uh, let's keep trying other uh, resistances here. All right, so we've gone up to a 1K. That didn't bring our current down very much. We're at 37. It still seems like it's climbing. It still seems like it's climbing up. Okay, so let's try this again with uh, 1K. And we've got 36 volts of voltage drop. So we've got about actually 36 and a half. So 36.5 volts divided by uh, 1K, 1,000 ohms. There is our... Uh, current that's coming through that uh, resistor and then we want to multiply that by the plate volts so times about 432 plate volts 15.7 uh, and then if we divide that in half because we have two tubes each tube uh, is dissipating about a little bit under 8 watts and that's probably about what we want now if we go 12 times 0.7, that's going to be 70%. Yeah, see, that's real close to what we want. So I made a mistake right there. The actual plate dissipation of a 6v6 is 14 watts, not 12 watts. I was going by memory, and I'm not sure why I said 12. But anyway, um, it ends up sounding pretty good anyway, and I think it's going to run a lot cooler. So we're going to adjust the bias by changing the 470 ohm resistor to a 1K uh, on the bias, and that should take care of, hopefully, any future issues that this thing would have had. And yeah, standing it up off the board also is going to prevent it from getting too hot. Okay, another thing you want to do, pull all these connectors, these little spade terminal connectors, and go ahead and spray them and just reseat them all. And basically what that's going to do is uh, just make sure you're getting good connection on all those. So I've, I've already done these over here, and those are the last two I need to do on that board. We'll do this board over here. Just basically reseat these. This board over here looks pretty good from the top, but we're going to go ahead and pull it also just to make sure there's nothing going on that we can't see. This one over here, I'm pretty confident it's now ready to go. As you can see, we've changed, uh, again, we've changed the bias resistor, but we've also stood it up off the board. I don't know if you could be able to see that from this angle or not, but we've got this thing well up off that board now. So it's it's up in the air. There is gonna be airflow all around it. It's And that heat is not gonna go directly into that board because before it had nowhere else to go except directly into that board because it was basically sitting right down on top of it which is just a bad idea. Maybe one of these days, amp manufacturers will learn not to do that. I mean, they learned over here with these resistors, but they didn't do that over here with the biggest one in the damn amp. So I don't, I have not even looked at the schematic for this thing. So um, that might be something we, we look up and go over. We might look in the top chassis. We might do it for just for the hell of it anyway, just to see what it's built like. This is the first time of having one of these on the channel, so it might be instructive to do that. Uh, what did I just miss? Oh shit! Oh shit! Really? Okay, so you guys probably just saw that on camera. So I lifted this board right here, and did you see what happened over here with the ground lug? <laughs> 
That ground lug just came off. It just popped right off. I didn't even have to unscrew it or anything. So that was not well grounded. So I don't know if that's the only point where this thing gets ground, but if it is, then that's not, well, no, we've got a ground lug right here also. That's the, that's the center tap of the trans, the output transformer, yeah. So we're grounded on the center tap of the output transformer, but that doesn't mean any of this stuff over here is grounded well. And if that was getting intermittent ground, then that would definitely be an issue. Is that a piece of tape? What is that? That might actually be the, the stuff for the threads. Well, what you call it. I'm drawing a blank. Whatever that shit's called the, that you put on the threads. But that sure looks like a piece of tape or something to me. Like they tried to tape that in there or something. Why doesn't this have an end on it? What happened to the end of that screw? Look. You see that? There's no, there's no head on the screw for that. Behold this shoddy ass shit. All right, look at this. That that hole right there doesn't even pass all the way through the chassis. Look, it goes to the level of the paint. So do you see that gray inside there? That's paint from the on the or 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 the coating on the top of the chassis. I could probably even scrape through it with my fingernail. I'm not No, I can't get through it with my fingernail. It's a little bit heftier than that. That doesn't go all the way through the chassis so this this basically just screws down in it but the, but it just came right out it wasn't even threaded in there well how fucking dumb is that look at that it's really it's kind of hard to know who to blame do you blame the factory worker in china who's getting you know two dollars a day or whatever the hell pittance they're getting paid to do this shit or is it the fault of fender who should have sent somebody over to do quality control, you know, and and figure this shit out right here. I would say Fender, wouldn't you? I'm not going to blame the little Chinese guy. But look at that shit, man. What? Why? Why not just put a hole in the chassis and put a fucking screw through it? I don't What did you save by doing that? You couldn't have saved anything by doing that. God. Oh, dude. Bunch of fucking morons, dude. I mean, seriously, that's straight up. I'm not even I'm not even playing it up for the camera here. I, what the fuck, dude? It just popped off. Like, I, all I did was lift this board, and just the pressure of just lifting the board popped that fucking thing out of there. And that's the ground for the, for the whole goddamn amp, isn't it? No, there's no. No, we do have another ground over here, so thank Christ. There's another one exactly like that, you know, over here. That's the that's the ground for the entire amp. And that one hasn't fallen out yet, you know. That one hasn't fallen out yet. It seems pretty tight, but God, dude. But we'll go ahead and check out the bottom of this board, which is what we set out to do. All right. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't, I don't see anything um, jumping out at me. But you can kind of see what I mean over here on these uh, power resistors. Well, they look, they had the foresight over here also um, to give us a cutout. So what that's going to do is even further improve the airflow around these power resistors. So that's, that's good engineering right there. That's good stuff, man. Um, that's what you like to see is that kind of stuff. So they got this board right, I think. So compliment where compliments are due. You know, I'm not trying to be all sour grapes here. It's just, man, when you just pull up a board like that and the whole damn ground pops out, it's just pretty uh, shocking. Do I think that had anything to do with our overall problem? Possibly. It possibly could have. Would that have been a danger to the user? Not directly, no. It wouldn't have been a danger to the user. But still, it's just shocking. We do have a really long uh, 
protrusion right here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off because that doesn't need, doesn't need to be that long. Yeah, so all that solder looks good. Um, no problems there that I can see. So let's go ahead and drill. Um, but I'm glad I lifted that because we wouldn't have, we'd have never known that about that ground. So let's go ahead and drill out that hole for the ground and we'll put an actual bolt in there and that should be nice and secure. Okay, so one screw and one nut later and that's back in there. Uh, check the bottom of this board. This board seems okay. This one's ready to go as well. I think this uh, bottom chassis is, I'm going to give it a clean bill of health from here. So uh, let's open up the top chassis. There is one slight modification. I'll go ahead and make to this. They've got a ferrite bead in this amp. Look at that. It's precisely what that is. So that's that's there to help cancel um, RF interference. You've probably seen a ferrite bead before on some of your charging stuff for like, you know, phones and things like that will sometimes have ferrite beads on them and for laptops and things. Why is there an IC in this? Why would there be an IC in an amp like this? What is that? All right, I think it's time for a schematic because I I'm, I want to know what that is right there. That's quite possible. That's part of the uh, the tremolo oscillator. I will tell you one thing I like already is the fact that they actually have actual sockets mounted in this thing. So they didn't, and, and that's that's true of uh, the output so uh, sockets as well. Those are actually mounted sockets, so they don't have some stupid, you know, board mounted sockets going on. That's to me, that makes all the difference, man, in, in quality. So I, I'll give them def, definite props on that front. They didn't cheap out to that extent where they mounted the sockets direct to the to the PCB. This integrated circuit that's in here is an IRF820. But yeah, like I thought, uh, that IC is in the, the tremolo circuit. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell what it is and what it's doing. An IRF820. I'm not not 100% sure what it is. Let's look it up. Okay, so that is a power MOSFET. It's pumping up the signal, essentially, that's coming from the oscillator. So uh, one half of the 12, this probably, this second tube, I, I'm, I think it's the second tube. One half of this tube is the oscillator, and then this pumps up that signal so that it can more easily uh, adjust the bias. And the way that it adjusts the bias is kind of like what I was talking about. It adjusts it through, um, it adjusts the output uh, tube bias by adjusting the, the grid voltage. Okay, so R44, I think is the one we want to uh, change out right here. We'll see R44 is a 3.3K bias resi uh, resistor on that first, stage right there and I think the amp could be improved probably just a little bit by lowering that sum it doesn't have to be 3.3k I think they probably just did that maybe in the design phase they found that it worked a little bit better with the speaker that came in this amp but they're they're gonna change speakers anyway at some point so it doesn't make any sense not to lower that value to something that will bias that 12ax7 a, a little just a little hotter Remember, Piggly, nobody alive. I'm super serial. Nobody will listen to me. I'm serial. Okay, so we're not going to pull the board to do this. It's just going to be a simple case of uh, clipping out. We'll clip one side of it, and we'll just clip the other side. We'll just take the resistor out, and uh, we'll just clip our new resistor in. But to figure out what our optimal... Uh, value is going to be we're all we're going to whip out the uh, resistance box again pretty useful little things the resistance boxes because they help you in a lot of situations what we're doing here is we're just hooking each side to our box and uh, we got to switch it over to the high well no that's not true switch it to 3.3k now one of these I need to open this up and service this at some point but we'll do that later
Okay, so that's setting at 3.4, and it's supposed to be 3.3. It's pretty close. That's 2.3, 1.5, and 1K. Probably 1.5 or 2.2 is going to be optimal for this, but, um, but we'll check it and see. Pilot light's burned out. I don't see a pilot light. What the hell? Nothing's happening. Is that the same? It's plugged in. Right? What's going on? Uh... Is that resistor you clipped out the key to everything? <laughs> Well, I mean, you wouldn't get any sound, but you should get be getting something more than uh, 8.1. It's there, well, we're not really getting any wattage. There's nothing. There's nothing happening. It's like there's nobody home. I hear some kind of buzz. Hang on. Can you hear that? Yeah. And there's it's something. Something's running. Something's going on, but. What the hell? Did we blow a fuse somehow, maybe? Surely not. We've heard it. Well, we'll have to figure this out now. I mean... This is why people love your channel, Brad. It's never just an easy fix. It's that's always, it. It's, it's always something. I know. Turns. Uh, it's like an M. Night Shalaman. Shalaman. Ooh, what a twist. Shamahala, hey. Yeah. It it's, it's M. Night Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name being M. Night Steve. <laughs> I am here to help you with your problems. I wonder if something came loose maybe when I was, when I rehooked it up because, it, because of the, you know, all this. Something must have come loose when I was putting the board back in or something. We'll, we'll have to... We'll open it up. Okay. Pull this chassis back out. Uh, we'll try to figure out what's going on. I did notice that the internal fuse was a bit loose. So I went ahead and uh, compressed, uh, compressed the terminals on that a little bit. So I don't know. I don't think that was it, but we'll see. I mean, it's drawing some watts. It's drawing like eight watts with the power switch in the on position. So something is happening. But then nothing really beyond that. So I don't know. I don't know if we just have something loose here or what. Oh, there it went. But what made it go? There's just a half iffy connection on that connection right there, and I think it's a that must be a it must be a filament. I think that's a filament connection right there. It's just kind of iffy. And that that's what it... See that? Yeah, see, that's definitely... All right. Well, now I've got it narrowed down. So I, I know about what it is. But see, this is the problem with these spade terminals in amps like this. <clears throat> you end up with situations where they're a lot less reliable as a result. Let me show you what I'm uh, what I'm doing here. So one of these spade terminals, I don't know if it's this one, this one, or this one, but one of these is kind of intermittent. It's almost got to be this blue one, doesn't it? I think it almost has to be that one, or this, or this purple one. I need to make sure that there's a good connection right there on this spade terminal and also on this one. I'll go ahead and shut the amp down and and inspect those. OK, 
Okay, we need to make sure, first of all, we've got a good connection with the wire itself right there. So we'll squeeze that a little more. And that should, should compress that down some. And we'll also go ahead and tension this up just a little bit. That's almost got to be better right there, surely. Okay, let's try that again. See if it comes up the first time this time. Looking good so far. Yeah, there we go. And I want to give it a wiggle just to make sure we don't get any more of that crackle pop. Seems fine now. Yeah, I think we just had a, a poor connection on one of the spade terminals right there. I've got a sine wave plugged into the input. Keep it kind of low for a second. And what I want to do basically is just maximize the volume with uh, this knob here. One K is definitely the loudest, uh, so we're gonna settle on one K. So it's gonna be a tiny bit tricky because uh, one of these leads that uh, that I've left here to tie this onto is pretty short. So we're kind of we're kind of only gonna have one shot at this. And if we screw it up, we might have to pull the pull the whole board, which I don't want to do. So hopefully we can make this work without doing that. Spread that out slightly. This side is the side I'm really worried about. There's not very much lead there to solder onto. I think there's just enough though. So that's it. Uh, that's the mod I definitely recommend on this. Um, so R44 on the Fender Excelsior, you should change it from a 3.3K to a 1K. That's going to maximize the um, the gain out of that first stage. And uh, it's, it, it's going to allow the amp to break up better, particularly if you get a better speaker in it later. Um, you know, it'll just maximize the output of the amp. So anyway, that is pretty much done. Let's get everything back in and then we'll give it a short test. Oh yeah, before we get it back in the cab, I did notice it's a little bit dirty on that pot right there. We'll go ahead and clean the pots. Might as well. How's that? Like that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Excelsior. <laughs> Excelsior. Well, my work here is done. I've killed MVP, and now I must save the world from something else. Maybe I'll make a movie. A movie starring me. Then people will take me super serial. Excelsior! X. <laughs>
Thank you.